We're here today with Leo, who just came ninth in the recent Oceania Regionals. How are you feeling? Feeling pretty hyped, pretty, pretty hyped. Went 8-1 with Yamato. Unfortunately, I bowled out of the top top eight, but hey, I mean, 8-1 is still pretty good. Man, yeah. what, what did you do to your opponents? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like every person that I beat just <laughs> demotivized. Demotivized. Yeah. Demotivize. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't say the words, but yeah. yeah. And uh, do you remember your matchups? Yeah, so game one was Katakuri. Game two was Moria, which I lost, which is my one loss. Mm -hmm. And then game three was Perona. Then it was Moria. Then I played um, five Katakuris in a row right off. How did you feel about the matchups that you had? Um, I feel like the only slightly difficult matchup that I had Luckily, was the Moria matchup, but I feel like both of them were pretty winnable. It's just that for game two, you know, I think I made a slight misplay, being a little too worried about what my opponent had instead of what I had. Yeah, other right. than that was mostly good. Any surprises during the event for you? For surprises during the event, yeah, the fact that I didn't really play any Sakazukis. Like I kind of catered my list more into playing into um, Sakazuki. Um, also slightly into Moria, but I didn't really get too much practice with Moria, against mm. Moria because there weren't many people that played Moria as well as it's a pretty new deck. You know, we only had like two a week or two weeks to prepare for this regional event. But yeah, the fact that I just, you know, apparently I dodged every Sakazuki, which I personally <laughs> feel like is my best matchup, but yeah. yeah. All right, you wanna take us through the deck list? All right, cool. Yeah, so playing Yamato, the leader itself is the win condition. This is the leader that is getting through most of your aggression out early game, as well as in the late game, making sure that your opponent's hand size can never be too big. Mm -hmm. And then once their hand size is too big, then you punch through with cards with Rush, like Hody. And later on, when the new cards come out, probably Ace and the, and the Rush Yamato. Mm -hmm. But for me, for this set, currently, before those cards come out, I am playing the Wano package, playing for Momonosuke, the Searcher. Um, generally, I don't like the way that the Sky Island version and as well as the Fortress versions are too split on mm -hmm. like what kind of things they search. So if when I was playing Sky Island, you know, I would play Shura, but then the Shura will bottom deck all my all the cards that I felt like I would need. Your best 2k counters are Izo and Hiori, but then you know you can't really play the Hiori anymore if you're playing the Sky Island version. Right. Um, and then the Izos is just constantly getting bottom decked. I mean, with Satori playing them out anyway, so th like they're basically you basically have no 2k counters. Yeah. Like that. that you can actually search out with the Shura, mm -hmm. and then so if you don't see your own Holly, you just, you just straight up lose. Right. Um, yeah. So I try to go more into the Wano package. I just commit fully into the Wano package. You know, the same thing with Fortress. Mm -hmm. Like having split decks is just like makes it way too hard and way too inconsistent, especially in like a nine round event. Like too many times I would like play Bonnie and then bottom deck all my Dofies or any of my right. blockers or use my Baby Five and then bottom deck all my Acos kids, which they, like, there's no way for me to come back. To carry on, you know, the triggers Nekomamashi and. Kikunojo. A lot of people actually think Kikunojo is the best card, but now I'm being actually thinking that Nekomashi is the best card. This card has come up so much, especially into any deck that plays blocker, especially into Perona. I just hard played this on four, going second into Perona, and then just swing into every single blocker every turn for free because your leader lets you attach two down for free. They no longer have blockers to stop you from swinging at their face, and they're forced to just counter out or take it and screws over all their blockers. Do you think it um, worked overtime during the event? Yeah, it definitely worked overtime. Like, I wish I could play more, but I can't. <laughs> the Kikin Ojo also does really good. You know, it's a 6k that comes out of life, but the on KO effect literally never comes up. And then no one really swings into it anyway, so the 6k doesn't really matter. And then you swing 8k into them with your leader ability instead of 7. So, like, they basically do this, like 7k, 8k. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, right? right? It's two cards regardless. Like, the most important thing is get, making sure that your opponent's hand side is low for your late, uh, your end game plays, which is basically playing Hody on 9. Because I'm focusing heavily on the Wano package, I decided to play full Momonosuke. This card is a uh very clutch, I think, um, in the sense that a lot of times when you're playing Yamato, you play very aggressive and then you take a lot of damage early, as well as try to deal as much damage early. And then you play out your 2k counters like Izo, play out your 2k counters like Hiyori. But then they're all able to be recouped by Momonosuke back into your life, making you stabilize much easier. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can do a lot of damage by building a lot of tempo just by swinging with your leader and then using your 2k counters aggressively then you just play out Momo, go back to 3 life your opponent really can't do that much, right? You know, you can't lose, mm -hmm. you know, when you play it so it's very good in that sense also because it's a 5 cost blocker, you know other yellow decks, you know, like pure yellow decks like Katakuri just can't get around this you know, they're forced to swing it and you just get a guaranteed block out of it so another card that really overperformed is actually the Olin okay. um, so, one of the real strengths of, like a lot of people are like, okay, it's a uh, 7 cost that only triggers out when you have 1 life. But basically, you can trigger it out basically when you have 2 life, because when you add 2 life and Olin's at the top of your life, and you take the damage, then now you have 1 life 
you know, when the trigger up happens, so therefore we can play it out. Not only that, it is Land of Wano, so you can actually put it back with Momonosuke. Mm -hmm. Also, if Katakuris or NLs, you're playing into Katakuri or NL, and they play 8 cost Katakuri, they, they can't get rid of this. If they put it back to the top or top bottom of your life, you're like, sure, I'll get it back in like yeah. a turn or two. Like, what are they gonna do, right? As well as, you know, you just put, you just stack it into life with Hiori. So basically, instead of playing this for 7, if you have Hiori, you can play out the Hiori, stack your life with the Olin, and then play Momo, and then put the Hiori back to life, so you're at 3 life. So then your the opponent's cut a curry, can't even swing, and they put whatever you put in stacked in life back to the bottom of your thing, so you basically guarantee trigger. And if they play seven cost, then you just trash Yuri, it's like whatever. It's just so much pressure, especially when they don't know about it, right? Yeah. They probably think it's Kikunojo. Then you're like, oh wait, it's actually a seven cost seven K. And the same as into Sakazuki. Sakazuki's like, oh I could just bottom all of their all their triggers, but they're like, oh wait, I don't have Ice Age, I can't bottom their all in. So if they don't have their Kuzan, you just always sticks. Big mom putting in the work, eh? Next, three Yamato. This is very specific into two matchups. Mm -hmm. One is Perona, and then the other is NL. Yeah. Um, almost every other matchup is not going to be played. Maybe sometimes if Sakazuki gets a lot of 2Ks and then basically are really, really healthy and you can't, in a situation where you can't play Hody, you would play Yamato. Yeah. But almost exclusively, you would play this only into Perona and NL. Into NL, you are actually not the aggressor. You are the one that needs to stabilize by playing out a bunch of bodies, you know, slowly building board, clearing their board, especially using Deku Mumashi to swing at their characters. Like, yeah. if they play a Yamato for 9, while you have 1 life and they're at 2 life, you know, they yeah. can't carry your Deku Mumashi, then you attach 10 to your Deku Mumashi, swing 14 into your Yamato. Then, yeah. if they try to swing into your body, body that means they're not recovering or they're not playing their big bodies, then, you know, you can just counter out of it, and then eventually you'll just win the grind game, you know, and then you play your own Yamatos, and they can't play a review Yamato, but you can give her of this. And then into the same as Perona, you know, you wanna, both players have two life, play out Yamato, pop their blockers, try to go aggro afterwards, have a 9k body just swinging at them. Perona really struggles into removing 9 cost bodies, I, I felt like, and then this is the card that actually won me the matchup into the Perona in game 3. And the next part is the 2k counters. Because I'm playing Wano, I wanted to maximize the number of 2k counters that I can play out, have an effect, and then be able to put back into life with Bobo. Mm -hmm. You know, the most obvious one is being Izo, you play it out on 5, you know, tap down their blocker, if they play it out like a Rose Nanti block, or something, attach two to your leader, swing seven, they drop two cards, next turn you're on seven, boom, you play out a Momonosuke, put it back to life, and then you swing seven again. You just keep doing that, that's really good in that sense. Also a searchable 2k. Hiyori, you also play it out on, you can play it out on five, swing eight with your leader, stack your life with Kikunojo or Nekomomushi, or on seven, you can play it out, stack your life with Olin, then play out Momo, put it back into life. Yeah, as well as another Hiyori. Hiyori yeah. It's firstly a searchable 2k, but also the triggers actually comes up, came up, like I had zero counters in hand against one of the Katakuris, but then they swung for 5k. Mm -hmm. I took it, Hiyori, I played it, and then, you know, because they wanted to play their 7 cost Big Bomb, they had no extra Dawn to attach. I just saved, like, a bunch of life. If they just attach and swung, I'd have lost, but, right. you know, in that situation, they'll be like, okay, fine, they just played their 7 cost and they pass, right? So I only lose one life instead of losing the whole game. Yes, it comes up like that. Also, you know, because of your Yamato ability, being able to attach to Rissa Dawn, if you play this, assign it to like your um, Kikunojo or even to your, you know, Nekomushi or Olin, mm -hmm. then you use your Yamato ability to attach the two Dawn that you used to it. You're basically plus 3King your yeah. Wano characters without having, Insane. you know, for only spending two Dawn. Basically, the same kind of similar idea of Amaru. Um, and then, yeah, four Onamis. Very self explanatory. You know, double attack banish at their face. If they don't have the cards, they've lost. Yeah. Right? If this hits even once, it's basically almost over for your opponent. You're two cards up, right? If they weren't able to counter this, that means they had no cards in hand to be able to counter it. So that means your future swings, they can't counter either because they didn't yep. get any additional cards. Mm. And also the effect of being able to Thunderbolt um, any of your opponent's blockers. So let's say one of the games, my opponent played out, you know, Asabo and I couldn't get rid of it. Mm. But then luckily, you know, turn later they swung and I took it and it was Onami in life. I just Thunderbolted their Asabo away and then now mm -hmm. they're kind of screwed, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and then this is the real boss monster of the deck, the card that says, hey, how many cards you got? Oh, you got <laughs> six cards? I'm swinging 13 at your face at 9 dawn. Yeah. And you can't block it, broken. and if you leave any dawn up, it's rested. <laughs> yeah, yeah so that also came up today. The second warrior that I played that I beat, he was playing one of the, the black event, plus 4k if you have 10 cards in trash or something. Mm -hmm. And then I was, he, was, he had one dawn active, so I was just like, I rest that one dawn and you're one blocker. And then he's like, oh, well, now I can't counter. Yeah. And then yeah, 13k at face with Hody plus Amaru plus your leader ability. It's just, broken. it's just... 
too good, too good. Next, three Amaru's, self-explanatory, trigger, almost never came up. Came up once, I think, which that's because I was fully bricked up, like zero counters in hand. As yep. you notice, like, through my deck, I almost have no counters. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I will aggressively use the Amaru trigger effect to make sure that, you know, I don't lose. Yep. Um, because that, you know, you don't want to really lose, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't win if you lose. <laughs> so, yeah, so do sometimes use it, but basically, because of your leader realty, it's a 5k, plus yeah. 5k to any character, mm -hmm. generally you're holding on nine. Yeah. So like, you know, the best time to win the game is actually on nine, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you swing eight, you swing 10, you swing 10. And then your opponent's at zero life with six cards in hand. Yeah. You play holding, you swing 13 for game. And then, and then they, they can't counter. GG. Yep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then as I said before, because I'm playing so many non-counters, I just had to max out on the zero cost event. Sometimes I will counter a 5k swing with this plus another card because you have to, you just ha have to live. Right, it's very important to live. One of the funny things with Yamato is that your hand size doesn't matter. As long as you're not dead, and then you're able to get to a situation where your opponent cannot protect themselves anymore. Because they will always get to a point where they have to guard your lever swings, mm -hmm. at least once. Yep. But then if you're swinging 10k, that's four cards out of their hand. Yep. So many times I would swing eight, then next turn swing eight again, and then next turn swing, I just swing eight, 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 three mm -hmm. turns in a row. And then they're like, okay, they take the first one, the next one they guard, the next one they guard, and then now they have zero cards in hand. And then, you know, if you trigger one Okiku and like, even if you have like an Ezo out, you just swing five, five at the thing, they'll take, because they're like, oh, it's only one swing, right? A lot of people are so intimidated by the double attack that they will just take a free swing from like a flat 6k swing. Yeah, right, from true. Kiku Nojo. Yeah, and then you're like, yeah, sure, my double attack doesn't activate anymore, but my leader isn't only about the double attack at that point. Yeah. If you're at one life, it doesn't matter if you're at two life. One life and two life is exactly the same. You know, me being able to put myself in a situation where maybe I could just get you to zero life without being able to attach, investing 10 dawn into swinging with my leader. For your starting hand, what are you looking for? Hody. That's it. You just have to have the Hody. Just, just, have, just look for Hody. If you don't have Hody, as many counters as you can get. Every other card really doesn't matter. Because in the end, you just need to swing. Like every turn was basically go first, mm -hmm. right? On one, maybe play Momo. Mm -hmm. Don't tap your Momo on turn two, just swing eight. If they drop two 2k counters, you win. Fair right? enough, yeah. From there, you can play slow. That's why you have the Momos. That's why you have the Nekomomashis. That's why you have all these things. You can punish your opponents really well if they counter early. It's the same reason why a lot of people play the Gedatsu, right? Mm -hmm. Playing the Sky Island variant. If my opponent counters the first swing, first AK swing, mm -hmm. then you play Gedatsu on five, you KO full cost. It's kind of the same idea, except instead of playing Gedatsu, you play Kikunojo or Nekomomushi. And then you just keep swinging sixes every turn. And then eventually, they're going to have to take it. Any last words or shout outs? Yeah, um, shout outs to Bill, um, <laughs> the greatest store owner of of, uh, New, of Zealand. New Zealand, <laughs> my man. He's the one who helped me actually cook up this list. He was like, oh, well, he thinks Wano is the best. And I was like, tested him again quite a lot. Mm -hmm. One of the best Sakurazi players that I know. Yep. Um, and yeah, I, I noticed that the Wano package is pretty dang good. So yeah. I decided to keep going with it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Leo. Congratulations right. on your top nine place. Still a great achievement. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you.